Perfect compromise between comfort and performance. The Stita Magnaride Sport Springs Camber Plates Front and Rear Sway Bar and the Stita Stop the Hop Starter Kit on this 2024 Mustang GT. Let's check it out. If you just picked up your Magnaride equipped S550 or S650 Mustang, and you're looking for the best of all worlds when it comes to suspension, everything on this table is exactly what you need. First things first, the Stita Magnaride Sport Springs. These are a great spring because they're progressive rate designed specifically for Magnaride as a street performance upgrade over the factory springs. It's very similar to the Sport Progressive Springs for the non-Magnaride cars as those are our best selling springs for S550 Mustangs. Now if you're familiar with the Magnaride spring offerings from Stita, you know we have these Magnaride Sport Springs as well as the Dual Rate Springs. You see a lot about the Dual Rates on our channel because we love racing here and those are our track focused, handling focused spring with some street manners thrown in. But if you're looking for a great all around spring that has amazing street manners and holds up its own on some back roads and autocross and even some track days, but again is more street centric, the Magnaride Sport Springs are the way to go. The reason why these are a street oriented spring is simply because they're progressive. What that means is you have a softer rate and a stiffer rate and it ramps up from one rate to another as the spring compresses in comparison to the linear springs out there like the factory springs which are just one rate. The advantage to progressive springs is that the softer rate is actually softer than the factory spring rate on these 2024 GTs but what that allows for is comfort when you're cruising down the road. But as you lean into the car in the corners you know that you're going to ramp up into that secondary rate, add more stiffness and keep the car flatter and cornering. The concept of the Sport Progressive Springs and the Magnaride Sport Springs are the same in that they are a progressive spring, but we have specific rates for these Magnaride Sport Springs that works perfectly with Magnaride. Now, anytime you lower these S650 Mustangs, there's no front camber adjustment from the factory unless you have a dark horse handling pack with that adjustable strut top mount from the factory. What that means is you either need camber bolts or camber plates. For this particular build, knowing that the customer may be doing alignment adjustments in the future, we added camber plates just due to the ease of adjustability. But if you're a street specific car, camber bolts are just fine. But again, if you have any performance driving in mind for your car going forward, we do recommend camber plates. We dive into this subject really deep in another video on our channel, so be sure to check that out if you have any more questions about camber plates versus camber bolts. Now, we just mentioned that these lowering springs are a little bit on the softer side, but in order to retain and improve the handling ability of your 2024 plus Mustang, adding a set of sway bars will do just that. That's why we chose our inch and three eighths adjustable bar for the front and our one inch adjustable street bar in the back. One thing to note for the Magnaride cars is that the softest setting on the sway bar, the setting that is all the way out, you cannot use that with the Magnaride equipped cars due to the additional wiring behind the strut. But aside from that, you have freedom of all three front holes as well as all three holes in the rear. For this particular car, we chose the second softest hole on the front bar and the middle hole in the rear. After our testing, I was very happy with the rear adjustment being in the middle in terms of roll stiffness, but in the front, we could have used a little bit more just to make turning a little bit more reliable and confidence inspiring, but that's the benefit of having these adjustable sway bars is as you learn the car, as you're able to push yourself as a driver and even if it's difference between tracks, you have that adjustability in your bars and it's super easy to change. And lastly, to tie the complete package together, you have the Stop the Hop Starter Kit here. These are our subframe support IRS braces, as well as our subframe support bushing system and the alignment kit. Starting off with the alignment kit, it looks very simple and that's because it is. The factory rear subframe on the S650 Mustang, the bolt goes through and as the subframe bolts to the body of the car, there's quite a large void in that area before the bolt actually meets the car itself. The alignment kit is designed to fill that void and square up the rear subframe with the rest of the car. The subframe bushing support system does just that, supports the bushings. 
Obviously, with any bushing, you have the option to drill it out and put a stiffer bushing in its place, but with that comes an increase in NVH. We developed the subframe bushing system to support the factory bushings. So it eliminates a lot of the deflection that the factory bushings have and supports them where needed, but doesn't add any noise, vibration, or harshness, NVH, to the driver so you're able to enjoy the car as intended, but also get the power to the ground when needed. And last but not least, the IRS subframe support braces. What these do is triangulate between the rear subframe and the body of the car. Again, the more that you can tie everything together and add some rigidity without adding NVH, you're winning across the board in both comfort and performance, getting all that power to the ground with no wheel hop. So now you know all about these parts. Now let's get them installed on the S650 GT and see what we got. And now for the best part of the video, putting these parts to the test on the new 2024 Mustang GT. This car has a performance package, so it had the big Brembo brakes on it. Great opportunity to put them to the test in this autocross course. So what we did is we had the starting line, and obviously that stopped the hop kit doing its job off the line, about a 100 foot sprint to the first slalom cone, and then 75 feet in between each slalom cone, four in total, exit the slalom, go around a big roundabout, which is a great test of roll stiffness because if there's less roll in the car, I'll be able to keep more power and more speed going to the ground around the roundabout. After you exit the roundabout, you're actually able to roll on throttle pretty hard as you accelerate towards the slalom. This is a great test because that area of the roundabout, we did a lot of magnaride testing there with our controller, is quite a bit bumpy on the asphalt. It's all about getting that power to the ground, the magna ride, the damping, the springs, the sway bars, and the IRS stop the hop kit doing its job keeping that power to the ground. Hard breaking into the slalom with those big Brembo brakes, go through those four cones and a sprint to the finish. For the stock runs, I did one practice run just to get a feel for the car, a feel for the course, a feel for the brakes, and get everything under control, and then we did our three runs stock. All right, we did a warm up lap. Let's do the first one, see if we got Bone Stock 2024 GT Performance Package Automatic with Magnaride. Fastest one I could do was a 34.084 around the course. All in all, I was very impressed with the package stock, not only with the Pirellis and the side-to-side -side transitions and how well they held grip, even comparison to the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires on the older cars, but also the Magnaride tuning on these newer cars is much more improved. And the Brembo braking, the car brakes much flatter than the S550s did. All great improvements from the factory and only improved even more once we had the suspension to back it up. Now let's check out those modified runs. Wow, these 
And as you can see for those modified runs, one thing I want to note is not only were they faster, but in the slalom you may have seen a little bit more body roll in that slow motion. The only reason that is, is because I had more confidence behind the wheel and more mechanical grip to get through that slalom that much faster to drop over a second over the stock runs. That says a lot, over a 30 second course, you're dropping a second, that's a significant amount of time with just a couple parts. Now let's walk through the run a little bit. Off the line, I was able to foot brake it just a little bit more to get that much more of a jump off the line. Then through the slaloms, that's where the sway bars came into play. The springs were doing their job with the dampers, but the sway bars were able to keep the car rigid and not rolling through those high speed transitions. In stock form, the car was higher off the ground. I had a little bit more suspension compliance in the rear simply because I had more travel. With a lowered car, you don't, but that's where the progressive rates come into play because I was able to get the power to the ground more reliably as I corner exited off the roundabout, headed towards the slalom under pretty heavy acceleration. And then I tackled the slaloms again after hitting the brakes really hard, the springs and dampers keeping the car up in the air nice and flat, went through the slaloms and ultimately a sprint to the finish. Not only was this a fun test, but it showed all the parts working as they were engineered, not only on our race cars, but also our street cars and everything in between. So let us know in the comments below where you wanna see us do another test like this. Do you wanna see it on a dark horse? Perhaps a GT350R, Mach 1, another GT, dual rates? We are all ears. Please let us know in the comments below. For all of your S650 performance parts needs, you hit us up right here at Stita.com. Again, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.